welcome back. Now, imagine if you took out a pension, expecting it to pay out when you reached a certain age. Then the age threshold was suddenly changed, leaving you thousands of pounds worse off. Felicity Reid, who's 64, is one of thousands of women born in the 1950s who've been hit by controversial changes to the state pension age. She's now campaigning for greater equality. <laughs> Last year I took up the accordion because I thought, well, I might be able to go busking. <laughs> and it's crazy, really, for a 62 and a half year old woman to go busking, but I might have to do that. It was a real shock. I heard in 2008 from a friend that our pension ages were changing. And that, that was a shock because I was thinking, oh God, how am I going to manage for, six, for another two and a half years? And then, double whammy, I heard in 2012 that my pension age had changed again. So I'm now not going to retire, if I ever retire, until I'm 64 and a half. I'm always worried. I'm, I'm always thinking, how am I going to make ends meet? It's very, very, very difficult. Sometimes you have to make choices of uh, whether I turn the heating on or I put an extra layer of clothes on. It comes down to that because it's, um, it's very, very difficult. So I am very worried, yes. And it doesn't make me very well, really, yeah. A friend of mine had to sign on when she was 60, made redundant, and, um, and it was awful, yeah. She had a terrible time and she found it a really humiliating experience, yeah. And I might get to that point too. Women coming up to 60 now still don't know that their pension age has been shifted up twice and are not going to retire till 66, 67, and that's really not good enough. So, um, yeah, we will become more militant, and I think the next debate will be how we do it. Um, if, if it means that we have to go outside and chain ourselves to the rails of Downing Street, we'll do it. We'll become suffragettes. Yeah. Well, earlier I was joined by the SNP MP, Mary Black, who sits on the Work and Pension Select Committee and is a supporter of the campaign group Women Against State Pension Inequality and the Conservative MP, Chris Philp, a member of the Treasury Select Committee. Mary Black, scrapping these changes would cost billions of pounds, so where would you get the money from? Well, I mean, I think it's worthwhile starting off to remember that everything governments do costs billions of pounds. And what this is about is priorities. You know, for instance, uh, uh, the figure that's being branded is £30 billion across 10 years. So, for instance, it would be a good start to get Google to pay their tax, for mm. a start. Second of all, it's about priorities and looking to see, well, maybe should we be sending airstrikes over to Syria or should we be looking after our pensions? A third point would be to assess whether we should be spending millions on nuclear weapons to sit in the Clyde and do effectively nothing. You know, I think this is money that can be better spent. These women are owed their pensions. Chris Philp, it's a question of priorities and campaigners say that the women who are suicidal about these changes. Well, I think it's a matter of, of equality and fairness. For, for many decades, uh, men have retired later than women and it was decided 20 years ago in 1995 to equalise the retirement age so men and women retire at the same age, that strikes me as fair and reasonable, and it's coming into force in two or three years' time. Okay. But there has been plenty of notice. There's been 20 well, years. Uh, let's come. We'll changes. come to that in a minute. We'll come back mm. to the equality point. But I just want you to address this point that women are suicidal about these changes. They're struggling uh, to live, according to the campaigners. What do you make of that? Well, I think 81% uh, of those affected have their pension start date altered by 12 months or less, and the other 19% and will have their pension date put back by no more than 18 months compared to what they expected. And that's a concession by the government because it was intended to be two years. So 18 months, um, of course, is disappointing, um, but it's not as bad as it could have been. And that exact concession is, and is evidence that you recognise in the past that you got this wrong. To say that women knew about this is not true because, yes, you're quite right in saying the 95 Act made the initial jump of five years from 60 to 65, but nobody knew about that. The first letters weren't sent out until 14 years after the 95 Act was implemented. Even at that, the DWP itself can't even agree as to whether all letters were sent well, out well, well, on that point, I mean, clearly there was huge publicity at the time. The last Labour no, government... No, no official no, correspondence But the, the last women. Labour government started sending letters in 2009, which is about eight years in advance. And then in 2012, after the subsequent changes mm -hmm. in 2011, another five million letters got sent out. And even those letters were still five to six years mm -hmm. ahead of the change taking effect. That's a lot of letters. Two points here. The first thing is that it was not widely reported at all. Many people have looked back and researched, and there was a couple of adverts in the business sections of the Financial Times or whatever other papers. Well, I remember it. It had huge press coverage. Second of all, right, me and you both have phones. 
We have contracts. See if Virgin or 3 or O2 change your contract, I would expect them to write to me to let me to know what's happening. And I would take umbrage at the fact that they didn't contact me. I would especially take umbrage if they waited 14 years to contact well, like me. Like I said, 5 million letters were sent in 2012 and the Labour government sent a load of letters to everybody affected in 2009. The fact of the matter is, you have women who have been expecting to retire at 60 who have not received correspondence from the government. And if they have received correspondence, quite often it's very conflicting. I have one constituent who got a letter saying that she was going to retire in a couple of months at the age of 60. <coughs> Three weeks later, she got one back telling her that she's actually not retiring until she's 66. How can that be OK? Women Against State patient Pension mm. Inequality, WASPI, the campaign, has, has been very vocal on this. Mm. Where should the campaign go next, in your view? It's been suggested that perhaps um, they should be looking at taking the government to court. Is that uh, a go of you? Well, I mean, I, I'm not a lawyer just now, so I'd have to look into that, but I think they shouldn't have to be going to court. The point is, people vote in representatives to make decisions to benefit their life. If the vast majority of women affected are coming forward and saying, by the way, not only is this unfair, but we're actually really struggling here. It's the job of government to Hang respond. On, it's, it's not the vast majority. A survey done in 2009, so before these letters were even sent, found that about 73% of women did know. Right. That was before the letters even got on sent. That, on that but hang point, on, there is, a, there is a wider point about pensions. And that is that, you know, we've got things like the triple lock. We've got the new basic state pension, which will specifically make women better off by £416 a year, starting, I think, this year. And pensions are going up at 25 3% a year when inflation is zero. So generally speaking, pensioners are getting a fantastic deal under this government. And particularly, women are now getting a better deal than they did before because of this extra right. money under the basic state pension. Very brief final thought. Very brief. To say that the new pension is going to benefit women is a nonsense because women will have to have 35 years national insurance contributions. That means that if the women we're talking about in question come from a generation built upon inequality, they don't have private pensions, often in part-time work, often out of care looking after children. They don't have the ah, 35 years. Which is now being counted. counted. That's now being counted. I'm, I'm sorry that we're, we're completely out of time. Uh, Mary Black, Chris Phil, thank you very much thank for you. joining us.